Given all the information of late, one of the things I wondered a lot about is why have more people not become red-pilled? I mean, let's face it, what we know about the vaccines, about their efficacy, about the safety and everything else, uh, given all the data that's been coming out over the last year and a half, we know far more than when we went in. And based on what I see, one should at a minimum have pause and questions for it. So why are more people not questioning it still? Why have so many still gone along with the narrative, so to speak? Well, I think I got a little light shed on that recently when I listened to an interview with uh, Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk, for those of you who don't know who he is, follow his podcast. He's a young man who had 18, and now he's like, I think, believe 28, 29, started Turning Point USA, a very uh, well-spoken, intelligent, thoughtful fellow who is, uh, you know, built quite a little uh, empire, essentially, for uh, getting the truth out there. Uh, now, he had on Steve Kirsch. Steve Kirsch, serial entrepreneur. You might have heard of his name if you're one of those people who has questions about vaccines. But for those of you who don't know it, like I said, serial entrepreneur. And in his own words, uh, somebody who contributed about $20 million to the Democratic Party in the United States over the past 20 years. Um, a big believer of the vaccines right off the bat. He said March 2021, he got vaccinated. He was all on board. And then slowly as he encountered people, he started having questions. And as the questions mounted and grew, he went and approached the politicians and hit a brick wall. Uh, essentially, he couldn't get anybody to debate him, talk to him, or even give him the time of day, even though he would be, in, by all accounts, a super donor. And one of the things that Charlie asked him was he said, well, why did you, you know, like, how, how did you, like, why did you trust everything right from the beginning? And his, his answer was quite interesting. He said, well, I, I trusted government. And I thought, wow, here's a guy who's a serial entrepreneur who would think and know, obviously from his encounters with government, that they are less than competent. And, and that was the point that kind of actually hit home for me is I always associated competency with uh, dishonesty, malfeasance, let's say. And for me, the two with the government kind of went hand in hand. But I realized for people like Steve, people who were left or liberal or whatever, they viewed no doubt government as being incompetent, but yet they did not see their malfeasance or they didn't see the people as being genuinely evil or dishonest in any way. They just viewed them as merely incompetent and assign the fact that, hey, in order to get a democracy, you're gonna get incompetent people. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And perhaps maybe that's one of the reasons a lot of people challenged, are still challenged in taking that red pill when it comes to the vaccines. See, they view government, no doubt, that you probably wouldn't get an argument out of them that government isn't run inefficiently, that people are less than, like, less than productive, they have a way to cluster things up pretty easily. They would grant you all of that. However, you lose them on the fact that some of the people perhaps that are in government are genuinely evil or dishonest uh, or only in it for themselves about wanting to make money. Now, again, some of them will argue and say, yeah, no, no, I get it that people who run for office and want to have power are all about making money. But they draw the line at that these people are willing to do anything. In other words, put the uh, safety, the health of fellow citizens on the line for making that buck. That's a bridge too far that they're just not willing to cross. Fair enough. And I think that's where if you're going to speak to somebody about this and about this issue where you have to begin, you really have to delineate between the difference of do you think that government as a whole is incompetent but still for your greater good? Or do you believe the government as a whole is incompetent and it is also full of people who perhaps are only in it to line their pockets, but not only line their pockets, but do it at the expense of fellow citizens? That is the, the bridge that they have to cross. Now, for me, that bridge is easy. I'll tell you why. I mean, I come from India and in India, I realize that there's a lot of politicians who are openly dishonest. I, I'll give them full marks. I like the fact that they're very transparent. They don't pretend to be anything different. The difference I notice in Canada, United States, Western, uh, Western powers is up until very recently, they were, you know, obviously these, uh, these incompetent people, but they always portrayed themselves as genuinely caring about you and they were 
um, let's say, uh, without reproof. In other words, these are people who, you know, genuinely outwardly weren't admitting that they were dishonest or they were out to make a buck or whatever else. They always portrayed themselves as caring about fellow citizens. However, that's changed. We've noticed in the last couple of years, especially with our the prime minister, that it is not the case. They are not genuinely interested in your well-being. They're more interested in power and lining their pockets. And like I said, uh, politicians in India, places like that, they're always transparent about that. That's exactly why they're in it and they're candid about it. And so that always gave me a healthy skepticism of politicians. Two, I have a Judeo-Christian worldview. I realize that men and women are broken. We're all screwed up, me included. We are all have evil tendencies to some degree. And I don't live by that left coast, west coast mindset that deep down we're all good people. No, nah, I don't buy that because I know I'm not deep down a good person. I mean, I may do good things at times, but trust me, I have those thoughts as well. And you know what? I am less than perfect. I am certainly not by any means a virtuous, saintly man. And I know if I'm not, I know that the people that are in power aren't either. Now, what holds me back? Restraint, whatever. Let's say it's my Christian worldview. That's what restraints me from going all in and just living for myself and exploiting everybody I can. But there's people who have none of those restraints. I find that people on the left side of the spectrum, people who are hardcore liberals that way, um, generally are more secular. So, and again, their, their God is their own. Fair enough. So I realize that, and I think that's the difference with somebody like Steve, who, again, serial entrepreneur, has had lots of experience, has dealt with the incompetence of government, but has never really seen the malevolence of government, which is where a lot of people are seeing. So I think that's really important. If you're going to engage someone and have that kind of red pill moment, it's important to ask those people those kinds of fundamental questions. Do you view government as a greater good? Now, if they say, yes, I do, well, there are people who believe in big government. And the question you have to ask then is, does government act for the greater good all the time? It'd be very hard for somebody to honestly answer yes, because we know that doesn't happen all the time. So the moment that doubt starts creeping in, the next question is, is if that's the case, could they also be, let's say, wrong on this issue? Could there be individuals within government who may be acting for their own interest? Because we know that Canadian government, we've had corruption before, it's nothing new. If men and women are corrupt all over the world, there'd be nothing excluding the politicians in Canada for being uh, you know, oblivious to this or not having this quality themselves. So I think it's really important when you're talking to somebody, uh, go at it from that vantage point. Try to really distinguish between the understanding that yes, they all accept the fact that government's incompetent, it's less than a perfect system, but it's the one we have. But do they also realize that there's in the not only is it incompetent, but are there genuinely dishonest, nefarious individuals within government who are only there to line their own pockets and their own self interest, willing to do so at the expense of their fellow citizens? I think that's a good approach to take, and that's probably a good place to start. Uh, otherwise, we, uh, we have to distinguish the two and make them realize that we believe, yes, that individuals within government are incompetent, but we also further believe that there's people who are nefarious, like I said, genuinely dishonest, and who only want to line their own pockets. And the moment people realize that, I think that's the beginning of starting to take that red pill. Anyway. Those are my thoughts. I would, if I were you, check out Steve Kirsch, check out Charlie Kirk. Well worth listening to, watching, um, and I will see you next time. Again, I'd love to hear your comments, your uh, thoughts on this. Please post them in the section below and uh, follow me on my Rumble on my Locals account. And as I said, see you next time.